Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Flagrant Talk Sports Podcast. It's me, Isaiah, here with my favorite co-host, Mr. Moses Firmino. What's going on, everybody? And today, we've got NFL power rankings through the first two weeks. We've seen some amazing football already. We've got some very big surprises that are on this list, and we've got some very big surprises that are off this list. Two weeks into the season, we're looking at you, Baltimore Ravens. We're looking at you, Cincinnati Bengals, but we are ready to do our top 10 power rankings. Mo and I do not know each other's list. The way that we set this up, if you're 0-2, you are not on this list. You can't be. You're 0 yeah. 2. So the Ravens, uh, again, if I'm projecting down the road, I still feel good about them. We're two mm-hmm. weeks into a season. Take these rankings as a whole, as you know, it, it's not that deep. It's not that deep. Two but, brutal losses. Yes. It's, it's a long season. Brutal. Mm-hmm. But I, I trust in the team. But if we've got a team, you, it's the, the NFL darling this year, the New Orleans Saints, they're on this list. And yep. speaking personally, they're pretty damn high and, and it's, on, yep. it's very high and I feel confident in it. This is, they deserve the credit <sighs> two weeks into the season. Am I saying they're going to win the Super Bowl? No, but I'm giving them the credit they deserve two weeks in. A- and that's how we're rolling. No, oh, yep. two teams. If you're one in one, you could be better than a two and O team. It's not strictly records either. Yep. Head-to-head matchups play a part, but you're going to find me contradict myself right at 10. So that's the criteria on this. We'll have a Ah. nice little tier maker so you can see it. Mo, anything you want to add before we get this list started? Uh, I think you covered all my bases and my worries for this video because I'm uh, a little little bit uh, cautious with my list here. But as you said, this isn't my end-of-season projections no. predictions um this is week three now uh mm-hmm. after week two this is we were recording this after the monday night football game so what a game um, what a game mm-hmm. and uh i i'm excited to get this kicked off because it Me appears too. we're gonna be talking about the same matchup we, but two different <laughs> teams so we certainly will i will get us started before i get us started though let us know your top 10 Let us know what you're feeling. What team are you really bold on? Do you think the Saints are a paper tiger? Do you think they're for real? Let us know Mm -hmm. in the comments. We would love to hear it. Off rip, the hypocrisy starts. I've got the Philadelphia Eagles at 10. And you might be wondering, well, why is it hypocritical? I don't have the Atlanta Falcons. Now, the Falcons are very good I, and they mm-hmm. they earned that comeback what a monday night game and an enjoyable game as someone who isn't emotionally invested into either team um the eagles had it i had this list complete um and with going into the fourth quarter felt pretty confident about where the eagles were i placed them at fourth on the list I'm like hey they're going to get a nice win over atlanta Quality home win. They're going to be 2-0. and Beautiful. And then the final minute 45 happen. The Eagles collapse. Saquon drops the ball. And the Falcons march down the field. Drake London. What a game. Kirk Cousins surgical in mm-hmm. that final stretch. Great performance from the Falcons. This to me is more of a belief that the Eagles were the better team. They should have won. You made yep. the right play call. Saquon Barkley mm-hmm. is open. You needed a yard. He would have easily gotten it and a couple more. And it didn't happen that way. No knees. You lose the game. So I've got the Eagles at 10. But if you've got the Falcons ahead of them because of the head-to-head, you will not hear an argument from me. Well, Zay, I appreciate you teeing me off because I have I love Falcons at happens. 10. Love it. Um. And yeah, you make a great case for the Eagles at 10. They're literally Mm -hmm. a play away from winning this game and us uh, not even having this conversation about the Falcons because they would be 0-2. But 
uh, an unbelievable last minute victory that they pulled off. Um, and yeah, Kirk has said it. He's not been himself, you know, but it was pretty much expected coming back from an injury of that significant at this mm-hmm. age, but, um, got the job done, got him a win. Um, their defense, which, uh, was the big excitement in Atlanta because of a lot of new pieces, a lot of moving parts down there has yeah. been solid. They have been really good. Uh, last first two games of the season. Mm-hmm. And, um, I just on the opposite side of what you said, I had to put the Falcons above the Eagles because of the victory. Yeah. Um, but I, I am not mad at you having Philadelphia at 10 because I do believe they are the better team. So, yeah, I and to talking going back to the Eagles too. the first game uh, of their season against Green Bay. I, I really do think you can chop it up to the field. Mm-hmm. Obviously, they walked out with the win um, and that's helps them. The Packers aren't on my list, but w- that is a separator for me. Um, yeah. But Hertz looked so much more comfortable running the football, getting out of the pocket, making a play. The statistics aren't necessarily there, um, but he looked more comfortable tonight than yeah. he did against Green Bay, which I think bodes well for the Eagles for going sure. through the rest of the season. So 100%, 100%. Those are our number 10s. Number nine, Mo, kick us off. What have you got? At nine, I have a team that I uh, disrespected in our predictions video, mm. and I you agreed with me. I feel like most of the football world agreed about mm-hmm. this team because uh, they didn't have any weapons on the offensive side of the ball, or at least we thought. The Los Angeles Chargers, I have at wow. nine. After starting the season off 2-0, uh, people may say 1.5-0 because they played the Panthers, but... <laughs> It, it was uh it was a great victory they held them to three points which is impressive to do in a professional football game but uh, yes. in any aspect um and they've just they've kind of shocked the world they've looked solid Harbaugh's mm-hmm. got the boys locked in you love to see him and uh Herbert kind of joking around kind of like, reminds me of some like high school coaches talking to yep. their quarterback before the game uh just love the vibes in mm-hmm. los angeles for the chargers right now and i gotta give them respect put them on this list i love it i will talk about the chargers very shortly so yeah. i'll i'll hold off on talking about them for now the Sweet. team i have at nine is a team who lost this one a close game to another team we will see on this list in a little bit. I've got the San Francisco 49ers. Um, overall, this just boils down to, yes, they're one and one. They lost a close one and they lost it at home, which is another great win for the Vikings. who I will get to in a bit as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I still trust this Niners team. Uh, they are banged up in Niners fashion. Sadly, obviously C Mac, uh, Debo, it looks like, is going to miss time as well. So that really hurts. But overall, it's yeah. the Niners. There's not much for me to say. Uh, the statistics are still pretty much that. Like, it's the Niners. They're going to be mm-hmm. okay. They're mm-hmm. lower because I'm giving credit to the teams through these first two weeks who have done just a little bit better in my eyes. Um, or in the case of the Vikings, winning that head to head. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Uh, I um, I'll talk about the Vikings. Oh, you got them right, at eight right now. Actually, yeah. Talk oh wow, what a setup. I'm, uh, I'm not going to be talking about team above, which uh might be surprising not, to a couple people. Can't be but mad. Can't be mad. I'm injuries. Not a game they should have lost, but gotta give credit to the Vikings, man. Absolutely. Sam Sam Darnold, your hot take is looking great. If you haven't checked out our hot takes video, go give mm-hmm. that a peep. But Sam Darnold has been legit in this Vikings offense. Yeah. Um, obviously Justin Jefferson's doing his thing, but th- this this team, um, again, similar to the Chargers, I was not expecting to do a lot in a little bit mm-hmm. of a tougher division uh at, at least uh, in the last few years but um 
gotta gotta give the Vikings their flowers, putting them at eight. I have them a little further down the line, so I will touch on them in a minute. But at eight, because we're locked in, <laughs> this is where I've got the Los Angeles Chargers. A yep. surprise team to me. Uh, my biggest concern about this team was the two things in football that are very big, getting explosive plays and preventing explosive plays. And I was concerned going into this season. Um, to the Chargers' credit, and I think what is great, I think Harbaugh coming in, building that culture, uh, immediately too with the draft pick of Joe all over someone like Malik Neighbors, which was heavily criticized at the time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joe Walt week one was going one-on-one -on -one with Max Crosby and holding his own. One of the best players in the NFL holding his own. And that confidence and that selection, the Chargers have an identity. And that is cannot be understated. It is so mm -hmm. important to have a team, to have a formula, to say, hey, our game plan isn't going to be sexy. If you've got Herbert in fantasy, yeah, it's going to suck for you. But what we're going to go out there and do is win football games. We're going to pound the rock. We're yep. not going to go for too many explosive plays, which kind of caps their ceiling to me. But out the gates, you got Harbaugh, a great team. They're going to run the damn football. And I respect it. And like you said, they did just play the Panthers, who should be relegated below. <laughs> uh, so yep. the in between some kind of purgatory between college football and the NFL, uh, yep. maybe we could send them to Canada. They could play in mm -hmm. the Canadian Football League. But uh, all, all jokes aside, uh, yep. the Chargers have pleasantly impressed me. I love mm -hmm. the identity and Harbaugh's got the team shaken. And the other Harbaugh is 0-2. And I would yeah. not have expected that to be the case going into the year. Would have predicted it to be the other way around, but yeah, that's why we that's why we love the games. So that's why that's why you gotta watch the games. They're not played on paper, and, and yep. you know that's what makes what we're doing so fun. So yep. what have you got at seven? Seven, I have a team who there was a lot of excitement being built in the off season, mm -hmm. and they have shown up. The first two weeks, they uh, are a couple plays away from being 2-0, actually. But with their big win this week, got the Arizona Cardinals at 7. Just absolutely picking apart the Rams and a mm -hmm. solid Rams defense at that. Obviously, a little bit different with the absence yeah. of Aaron Donald and some other guys. But still, a Sean McVay coached Rams D that is normally solid not known for giving up 41 points on the regular <laughs> um but they uh they were just carving Kyler Mur Kyler was Dude. sorry I just had a moment just thinking I about mean, the play I'll leave you there's too. numerous there's numerous but the one <laughs> Where he he just snaked around in the pocket six seconds they drew the the thing a uh, the little tracer yeah. of him and it's just it looks like all a kid over. scribbled all over the mm -hmm. page and he still throws a dot for a touchdown like yeah he's just showing everyone what he can do what he's been able to do injuries suck mm -hmm. but he's back in full swing with marvin harrison and company who got going this week after a really rough week one mm -hmm. and um like i said they uh were up in that buffalo bills game week one and uh kind of kind of collapsed so could be a 2-0 team that could have been higher on our list, but I'm slotting the Cardinals at 7. Uh, the Cardinals are not on my list right outside of it, but what a performance mm -hmm. in Week 2. And like you said, there's a world where they're 2-0 and and they're easily in that top 5 for both of us. Yeah, um, We talked about it in the NFC West video. We've talked about it multiple times with Kyler Murray that I could not wait going into this season for him to remind everyone who the hell he is. Yeah. Because the way people talked about Kyler and, you know, continue to, to a degree, <laughs> mm -hmm. is disrespectful. This yeah. is a great quarterback. I'm yep. not saying he's top five, but he's at minimum got to be in that top 10 discussion, uh, mm -hmm. able to generate so many plays. And we saw what him and Marv could do together in that offense. 
wow. Uh, James Conner, uh, talk about underrated too. Conner continues to be a solid back, give good production. He was running the ball really well all over the Rams. Um, so I, I love the shout out to the yep. Cardinals. I have a team that was very, very, very close to being 2-0 and as well, but suffered a defeat. I've got the Detroit Lions. Um, again, one of those teams, very quality, just solid across the board, and they were so close to beating the Buccaneers. Yeah. But Tampa went into Detroit, took care of business. Mm-hmm. That's a very quality win. A potential yeah. playoff game again this year. We saw it last year, but mm-hmm. two very uh, solid wow. teams. I just they, realized that they started the Lions yes. off with back-to-back playoff matchups. Said, "Run it back, yep. Run it back. You you got to play them again." Mm-hmm. Um, they were very close. I love this Detroit team. I think they are still the favorite to win the NFC North and potentially yep. to be the one seed in the NFC. I, I have them second still, um, but yeah. great team. Not much to add. They're one and one. So, And it's funny enough, the two teams we got at seven, we'll see them face off in week three. So beautiful. Look at it. The chemistry is, is on, on, on a whole time high right now, yeah. and it's going to continue because I have Detroit at six. Oh, my goodness. Beautiful. Um, <laughs> Like you said, a uh, tough loss to the Bucks, but mm-hmm. very close to being another 2 0 team. Unbelievable overtime week one matchup, yeah. prime time against the Rams. Um, this Lions team is legit. We've seen the growth of them over the last few seasons, mm-hmm. and it is just right on par with where they need to be at. A um, couple injury concerns, but obviously, a lot of teams are going through that right now, but a lot of people. Yeah. So, I got the lines of six. Love it. I have got a team you talked about a little while ago. I've got the Minnesota Vikings at okay. six. Um, yep. Like you said, the Sam Darnold take is looking pretty good. Uh, you can yeah. go see the hot takes video if you want more elaboration on that on our channel. Um, but he's looked good. Uh, he's mm-hmm. come out there and we talked about it. It's a make or break year for Sam Darnold. <sighs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> you've got the weapons, you've got the best receiver in football, you've got a playoff caliber roster. Um, so you were given the keys. Yeah, the situation was tough. You were not expecting to be the starter, but here yep. you are. The Vikings are 2-0, and a great win over the San Francisco 49ers. Um, the week one win didn't really move me because... The Giants, not good, but you handled them, and that's great. And then you go and you beat the Niners, who are banged up, but what a quality win that is. Um, I I just, it's cool to be given credit to the Minnesota Vikings two weeks into the year and say, hey, this is a 2-0 sure. team, and and you can't sleep on them. They're, they're yeah. playing some good football right now. Mm-hmm. We, um, we both had them at the bottom of the north, I believe, mm-hmm. so... And that was, we said in the video, (laughs) no disrespect to the Vikings. We love what the Bears are doing. We Mm -hmm. love what the Lions are doing. We love blanking on the, I don't know why I'm blanking on this last team. Oh, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, (laughs) But anyway, uh, yeah, 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 but anyway, uh, gotta love what you're seeing from Minnesota. (laughs) Seriously, man. Yeah. So happy to, happy to have him here, but we're in the top five, Mo. Top five. Get us going. I, you could have told me, Moses, week two, we going into week three, your power rankings, you're going to have two teams from the NFC South in your top five. And I would have called you probably a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. Crazy absolutely. would have been what I was leaning towards. But absolutely. I have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at five. Beautiful. I, just put Detroit at six. Had to slide the Buccaneers above that based on the victory. Obviously, week one, it's Commanders. Jane Daniels' first NFL game. Mm-hmm. But them looking at the Buccaneers offensively, elite. 
against the mm-hmm. Lions, an amazing defense, hostile environment on the road, elite offensively. Baker has been unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Um, and their defense, too, still getting it done. Still those dying remnants of that Super Bowl team that Seriously. they just still have this this mojo about them that they they're going to win this out and they're making a case for it. It's been a crazy start to the South and yeah. NF- NFC South uh, season. So I got the bucks at five. This is why we're locked in. I've got the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at five as well. Uh, everything you've said, I agree with. This was one of those teams we talked about when we did our playoff video, another shameless plug. You can check that out. It's doing yeah really well uh given our current power rankings and you can see yeah. the differences there but yeah. <laughs> um i i think this tampa team we talked about it i didn't have them in and i said it's gonna be really embarrassing when the buccaneers make the playoffs and we know they should be in here but we try and get cute and say they're not and uh the buccaneers smacked us both in the face said hey we're two and no uh, yep. Baker Mayfield, five touchdowns, one interception. Uh, <laughs> he's technically third in passing yards per attempt. Number one is kicker Jack Fox, though, on that beautiful play with the Chargers. Mm-hmm. Um, Derek Carr at two and Baker Mayfield at three with 9.7. So out of the QBs, he is two. It's been a great start to the year. I love this Buccaneers team and... I I think like you said, we'll talk about the Saints. The yeah. Buccaneers are right in the mix for that NFC South. And if you would have told me two teams were in the top five out of the South two weeks into the year as well, I would have called you a madman. There's no way, but here we are, and I feel good about both of them right now. Yeah, hundred percent. So I want you to start four. us. For Got four. you, number four. Got a team that got it done on Sunday night football out of the AFC. Make that two. Make that two. Love to see it. We've got the Houston Texans at four. Uh, They've shown right now, kind of like the Minnesota Vikings did two years ago, uh, this Texans team is capable of winning close games, and they're going to be in plenty of close (laughs) games if you're going to get to the promised land of winning a Super Bowl, uh, yep. especially in that AFC. So Stroud continuing to develop, not looking like there's going to be a sophomore slump, picking mm-hmm. it up. Uh, mm-hmm. The addition of Stephon Diggs has been a pleasant one. He was much more of a factor week one, um, but just another weapon. The biggest one on that offensive side is Joe Mixon. Uh, running like a man possessed out there. Yeah. He is dominating Mm -hmm. uh and i cannot wait to see him go up against the cincinnati Bengals because man whatever his rushing yards are i'm hammering the over over. (laughs) because uh he's he's playing like a madman he adds that new level the way Mm -hmm. i thought derrick henry would with the ravens is actually what mixon is doing with the texans through these first two weeks so yeah I I love this team building upon a great year last year and mm-hmm. the the sky is the the expectations are through the roof. I don't know how For I messed sure. that one up, but <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're uh, cooking with Houston. Yep. Going off of everything you said, man, the the mixing thing for me has mm-hmm. been unbelievable because I, I saw the move. I was like, cool, like yeah, mixing's been a solid back in Cincy, but like I don't, I don't know if this is gonna push the needle for them. Mm-hmm. It's it's pushing the needle and some. Um, he has been unbelievable. Their defense has been sturdy. Week one, he got a little little sketchy there, mm-hmm. but uh, had Caleb struggling, which could oh. be a little bit of a combination of a couple things there. But I'll give credit to the Texans, and we're locked in. Got them at four together. Yeah, I, I I really like this Texans team. A- and, you know, what their ceiling is, I'm not sure at the moment. But when you have Joe Mixon with 228 rushing yards through his first two games, you feel pretty good about pretty what this Houston <laughs> team can do. So, yeah, uh, that's who we've got it for at three. 
I'll kick us off this time. I've got the other NFC South team right here. I've got the New Orleans Saints at three. Uh, (laughs) All I need to say is this stat. They are outscoring their opponents 91 to 29 in their first two weeks. I could stop right here. And uh, I think that would be justification for being top three. So, yeah. Surprise of the year so far to me. Uh, Derek Carr only completed 11 passes last week in the dominant, dominant win in Dallas. Um, but those 11 passes were some of the best throws of his career. Like, mm-hmm. not even being dramatic. He has been incredible. Uh, looked like one of the best quarterbacks in the league. Alvin Kamara back alive, played like that Christmas day game uh, showing that, Hey, when you talk about top end running backs, my name should still be in that mix. Yeah. You should not be ignoring me. So I love this saints team. Uh, They've been the surprise of the year and we'll see if they can keep it up. But through these first two weeks, what a, a pleasant surprise in the league that, I did not see coming. I will be the first to admit. So, so we've got I, uh, three. I'll second that motion, but I'll talk about them in a pick from now because I have Buffalo here mm-hmm. at three. Um, dismantled the Dolphins. Obviously, uh, that was even prior to the injury to a. Hopefully, everything is good there. Um, but this Josh Allen uh, doesn't really matter who uh, he has out there. He's going to make plays. He's going to do what's right for the team, and he's going to win football games. Um, Bill's defense has looked a lot better than expected considering all of the migration away from the team this offseason. Showed that they can come back in tight games and win close games, and uh, they're just checking all my boxes right now. Um, little, Absolutely. little worried about my, uh, AFC East winner pick. Uh, well, I, can we, can we pivot real quick? Uh, I don't really want to have the Tua talk. I, me personally, if I, if Tua was a friend, if it was you and you were in that spot, I would highly, highly advise you to retire. Because life yep. after football is very important. But that's not even the the discussion I wanted to bring up. The Miami Dolphins, I think it was so ill-advised to not put um, the time in either developing or giving a solid contract to a backup quarterback. This is something we've known about Tua. He is, the concussions are a big factor, but it's not like that's the only issue he's dealt with in his career. And it's so dumb because now you're going to roll out Skylar Thompson, and we've seen what that is. It's not good. Even if they had an Andy Dalton, I'm not saying they're a Super Bowl team with Dalton because Tua is undisputed, like, the better quarterback. <laughs> You're yep. not going to pick up a, a guy on waivers who is better than Tua. Yep. But I just think it's so weird to not draft a guy in the third round or the fourth rounder to sign a Tyrod Taylor, to sign a, a Sam Darnold, to, sign, to not have a guy in case this happens. Because as things stand now with the Dolphins, I feel pretty good in chopping it up as a lost season. And yep. I'm wishing to a nothing but the best. I hope he is okay. And, you know, down the road, everything is okay. But from the football standpoint, I think the dolphins need to be held accountable a little bit for not investing in a backup. Yeah. It's a valid question that I haven't heard talked about, but yeah. And again, focus is on Tua. that should be the focus, but then you got to turn to the organization I don't like if they have a Sam Darnold here, I'm like, okay, maybe the Dolphins take can still hit. I'm probably still leaning Bills because of how they're playing, but yep. 
it's Skylar Thompson. So we'll see. Mm -hmm. Um, Back to the list. My number two. We've got the Bills. We've just got two and three flip flopped. Josh yep. Allen, second best quarterback in football. Uh, I've been beating this drum. I feel like both of us have, and uh, I, I'll be honest, I don't think it's very close. Uh, he is incredible. It as long as he is healthy, the Bills are a Super Bowl contender, and it yeah. really does boil down to that. Uh, they've been able to get some great pressure on defense, uh, which was something I had more question marks about than the offense without mm-hmm. digs because of mm-hmm. how he was phased out and Khalil and Curtis Samuel, like all of those guys they did invest in. Yeah. Uh, the Bills <clears throat> team is great. Similar to the, uh, saints dominant. And I continue to be impressed with Buffalo. Yep. Yep. Love it. Uh, mm-hmm. as for me and my saints at two, Yep. Just, uh, I, <laughs> your stat literally answers it for me. Obviously, yeah. week one was um, a different story, but week two was a legitimate um, contender in a lot of people's eyes. Mm-hmm. Um, a team in Dallas who is uh, normally a pretty great regular season team um, got exposed in their home opener. Uh, it was just, it was like clockwork. Man. Kamara still got it. Their defense, Cam, Cam, uh, that's not Cam Jordan. Cam, no. Yeah, Cam Jordan. Okay. I was, I'm tripping, bro. Cam, unless Jordan, you're thinking of someone still, else and I'm messing no, you up. No, still kicking. No. Yeah. Still kicking. Yeah. This, mm-hmm. this Saints team, they're <laughs> legit. I, <laughs> two is, uh, pretty crazy but crazy. I, I i think after two 40 point weeks it, it's earned um you earn it I, I mean yeah and will they come back down to earth i think so at I some point so like this I, this cannot be a consistent thing unless we're in for a is. treat but yeah. uh <laughs> i mean yeah, yeah man. It, it's what makes this so cool it's why i love power rankings is like Yeah, week two of the season, we'll look back and be like, wow, the Saints were legitimately top three. And you could, there is a sincere case for one. Yeah. Unironically, they have been that good. I I almost did. Mm -hmm. Honestly, if if it wasn't the Panthers week one, if it was any other team, they might be one. Fair. Totally fair. But they they get a a knock on their win because it's unfortunately the Panthers, so. yeah which uh, sucks but spe- speaking of Andy my Dalton, ranking but <laughs> yeah it which means uh at one I mean all right uh, thank you for tuning in <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, no, seriously <laughs> it's uh I. I'll be totally honest. I feel like I run out of things to like <laughs> talk about mm. with the Chiefs. I feel like yep. we, along with every other person you guys listen to that covers this sport, has said about the Chiefs. Yep, Mahomes. It, it's just going to sound like glazing. The only thing I'll add, wins over Baltimore, a win over Cincinnati, and that final call, I know it's been controversial, and listen, I, I dislike refs as much as anyone. They made the right call. He um, got there early, man. It, I it, hate it. I because I hate it because we know what's happening. We know something is going to work out in the Chiefs' favor, whether we like it or not, whether it's a good call or not. This time it was a good call, man. Yeah. I, and again, is it crappy to see – the game in that way game like that yeah yeah it, it sucks. sucks when the game is it, it ends and the primary discussion is it was rigged it was bs uh Man. the the Bengals were robbed it yeah. sucks when that is the talking point but it it's the right call it's what however in however, an alternate dimension they're owing to like in a real one and, and with the Bengals, 
kind of touching on the Bengals and Ravens since they're the two big teams not here. I guess the Cowboys. Cowboys. If, if you want to throw them in there. My yeah. Packers will be probably one here I by next year. I wanted to put them on the list because they're – but I just – but. Yeah, I I didn't either. So you know, <laughs> it, I can't say anything. But yep, you know the Bengals are a team that starts off cold and then heats up. The Ravens are not. So yeah. I'm curious if you start off the year zero and three, we're gonna be on here. And if we if we do, ooh, they power got the Cowboys next week. Yeah. yeah. And Damn. if you start 0 and 3, that Raiders game was the win you needed. You, you, you had needed to win that, that game. You, you had to win that game. Yeah. And uh, losing Dude, in the they, fashion they did. Cowboys, Bills, ba- Bengals is what the Ravens have. They're good enough to be all those teams, but <laughs> yeah. my. Lord, is you that a feel, gambit? You would feel a lot better if you were sitting at one and one than that, going into that zero and two. So that Raiders one, genuinely, Dude, like that is a win. You need to beat the Raiders. Need yeah, to. There's there's a legitimate path that they are zero and five to start the year. Then, you, like you, do you you can lose two, three more games. Yeah, you you got to hit the Packers <laughs> last year where you yep. all of a sudden turn into a different football team. Because yep. that Raiders won, and Brock Bowers went crazy. Devontae Adams reminding people, hey, I'm one of the best receivers in football. Still, yep. Still, uh, keep my name in the conversations. I'm, I'm getting disrespected. Him and Kamara both should feel that way, but... Mm-hmm. It's uh, this is what we got. It's in the makings for a crazy NFL season already. Yep. Um, Malik Willis, I will publicly say, I am sorry, brother. I was, I was very scared. Mm-hmm. And you came out and got the one win. and one, yep. one and one. If we can be two and three by the time Jordan Love comes back, that's my whole thing. Two and three, then I'm happy. We're good, yep. Yep. but anything over that is beautiful. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's what we got for week two. Let yep. us know your teams. Is there any team both of us left out? Is there a team I left out or Mo left out? Uh, let us know what you guys think. Mm-hmm. And before we sign off, Mo, Song of the Pod, what do you got? Some new... Joey Badass featuring mm. Chloe. Tell mm-hmm. me. Um, Great nice thing. little RB type vibe. I just needed some nice chill, Joey, as the summer season is ending. It's getting a little more cooler out. I just mm-hmm. need something to, to vibe to, and this is what I got. Thank you, Joey, for dropping. Love <clears> it. <throat> Love it. I've got a unreleased song, but I'm on a glaze bender. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. They got me dunking the donuts in there. <laughs> Not to be confused with Dunkin' Donuts, mm. but that's what come on. Hey, man. You know, I've got Timeless by the weekend featuring yep. See ya. Playboy Cardi. That's that's the yep. song of the pod. Yeah. Uh, can't wait for this football season. We're going to have plenty, plenty, plenty of football content the rest of the year. So if you enjoy it, please leave a like, subscribe, check mm-hmm. out some of our other videos. Yeah. And we can't wait to cover this season. For sure. It's going to be exciting. We're already off to a mm-hmm. exquisite start. So, And uh, for basketball fans as well, if you stuck it out this far, we're doing top 10 player rankings for every position in the NBA, starting with Mo's boy, Shea, and the point guards in the NBA. So if you're looking for some hoops content, as we get closer and closer to training camp in the NBA season, we've got that for you as well. With Baseball, playoffs on the horizon. What a beautiful time to be a sports fan. It's, uh, It's pretty awesome. Can't wait to cover it all. Thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm. Appreciate y'all. 
hit it love one time. Y'all. Love y'all. Bada bing, bada boom, and we'll <laughs> see you in the next video. Later, everyone.